In this lesson, we will see a very fundamental concept in graph theory. It's called topological sort, and this is applicable to uh, directed graphs. And uh, in directed graph also, we, it should be directed acyclic graph, or in sort, it's called DAG. So we will see the algorithm how to do it. There are different algorithms of doing it, but all of them are derived from the same concept. So first, let's understand the concepts. So for a directed acyclic graph, a topological sort is a linear ordering of vertices. So if we have five vertices, it just means a order of all those five vertices. And uh, the ordering is such that you have all the edges in the graph, uv. Let's denote every edge by uv. And edge is like this. And here we are talking about directed edge. So this end point is u and the direction is towards v. So all those applications where there, there are multiple entities and there is some direction relationship. For example, uh, you may have a manager in some organization and there would be some report E under the same manager, report A, report B and so on. So here direction is important. It's not undirected. That is B is not, uh, M is not reporting to B, only B is reporting to A, M. So there is a notion of direction. Similarly, some course, course A may be dependent on course B but B is not dependent on A. So in such kind of application, this topological sort will come very handy. And a topological sort is not unique. So this condition you have to remember, all the algorithms are derived from this concept only. I was talking about this. So I will implement one. I will also talk about other, and we will see that both of them derive from the same concept, this very line. For all edge UV, vertex U should come before V in this ordering. There can be other vertices in between, but U should be before V. And now the question is that it's not unique. Why it's not unique if it's directed acyclic? Let's see. Let's see we have A, then we have B, and we have C. From here only you can see that it's not unique. We have just two edges. This is U, this is V. So this end should come before this end. So let's write A, then write B, then write C. Does it, does it satisfy our property? So let's look at this edge, AB. So A should come before B. Yes, A comes before B. Now this edge is AC, so A should come before C. And here also A is coming before C. So this is a valid topological sort. Now we could have, from A we could have went here also. There are two neighbors. We went to B first. But if we go to C first, then we would have written AC and then B. Again you verify. A is coming before B, A is coming before C. So this is also valid. So in this very small example itself, you can see that it's not unique. Even if they, we have a D here, then D would come in the end. So B and C should come before D according to these two edges and B and C are coming before D. And A should come before B and C and which is valid. So for this also we have two topological sorts, both of them are valid. So this is not unique. In some cases, it may be unique. Uh, if here we had uh, multiple branches, if it's a linear kind of a structure, then obviously this will be unique. This will come before this, this will come before this and so on. Now let's look at some of the applications. As we had seen, uh, all the uh, entities which can be modeled with uh, this kind of direction relationship, like course A is dependent on course B. Uh, some folks are report, reporting to this manager and so on. So where, wherever there is a notion of direction, then we can apply this. And this should not be cyclic. In these examples which, which I quoted, these were not cyclic. So topological sort is important. Now let's see some practical examples. Build systems. So you may be using some ID for compiling your code. So uh, while building, uh, there would be different libraries interacting among them. Some libraries, library L1 may be dependent on L2, L3, L4, and these may further be dependent on some other libraries. So first, these need to be compiled before L1 can be compiled. So the your IDE can do some topological sort like this and then start compilation in that, that order. Similarly, task scheduling where task A should be done before task B. And uh, you can think of this kind of scenario. There are four tasks and A is dependent on B and D. So it depends on you how you model the direction. It could have also been in this direction, but you have to be consistent across all the edges. So maybe B is reporting to A, that's why we will take direction in this way, but then change the direction of all of these. So direction is, uh, it depends on you how you model it from A to B or B to A, but it should be 
consistent across the different nodes. So uh, it can be used in task scheduling where B and C are dependent on A. So A should be finished first, then only B and C can start. And D is dependent on B and C. So B and C should be finished first before D can start. And this can be seen in both of these ordering. Similarly, course scheduling, which we have already seen. So if one course is prereq of other, then that prereq must be finished first. Then we have some package manager, which installs some packages on different machines. So there also one package may be dependent on some other packages. So those must be installed first in order to install other package. Now let's see the formal algorithm of doing this. So please keep in mind this, this line, this is very important. In every edge UV, U should come before V. And we can find this in different ways. One of the ways is using a stack. So we start DFS from any node. We have already seen DFS. So if you have not seen DFS, I would request, request you to go and watch DFS, understand that, how it works, and then come back to it. So let's say we start DFS from zero. And uh, we follow this edges, these arrows. And we had seen here that U should come before V. So if this is the edge, 0 should come before 1 and 1 should come before 2. So 0 should come before 1 and 2 both. Similarly 0 should also come before 4, 0 should also come before 3. So this 0 should come in the beginning. So what we will do, we will start DFS from here and keep going till we reach a dead end. So when we reach a dead end, that is there is no outgoing edge from there. If there is outgoing ed edge, we would have followed that. But we have reached a dead end, that means there is no edge like this. So if there were some edge like this, then this node would have occurred before this node. But we are saying that we have reached a dead end and there is no node like this V. So this two should not occur before anything. So it can occur in the end. So whenever we reach a dead end, we can put it into a stack. So in a stack, whatever thing we put last, that is popped first. So we push two. That means it will be popped in the end and we are here seeing the same thing that there is no outgoing edge like this. So this there is no compulsion for this node to occur before any other node. So we are safe to put it in the stack so that it can be put uh, popped in the end and we are okay with that. And where is this coming from? This is coming from this line. And now we have popped two into the stack. So we come back to one and we see if there are any other possibilities, any other outgoing edges. So there is no other outgoing edge, only outgoing edge was to 2. So the requirement was 1 should come before 2. So 2 we have already pushed in the stack, so it will be popped. Anything which is pushed now in the stack will be popped first. So now we can safely push 1. Now we come back to 0 and see what are the other options. There are two other options. So we will take one of these. Let's take the smaller one, 3 before 4. So we come to 3, there is one more path going to 4. Now from 4, there is an edge going to 2, but this is already visited, so we will not go here. So uh, 4 should come before 2, and uh, 4 should come after 3. So again we have reached a dead, dead end here, so we will push it into the stack. Come back to 3, are there any other possibilities? No, we are just following what how we did DFS. So from 3 also there is no outgoing edge, and all the outgoing edges uh, uh, we, uh, we are leading to vertices which are already done, so which are already in the stack. So now we can push seven, uh, 3. Then we go back to 0 and see if there is any other path. There is one path but it's going to a node which is already in the stack or it's already visited so we will not go back here. So finally we will push 0. Now what we will do, we will pop this one after other. So 0 will be popped first, then 3, then 4, then 1, then 2. Now let's verify if this is a valid topological order. How many edges we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 edges we have. Let's look at this edge. 0, 1. 0 should come before 1. Yes, 0 is coming before 1. This is done. Then 1 should come before 2. 1 is coming before 2. This edge is also valid. Then 0 should come before 4. Yes, it's valid. 4 should come before 2. 4 is coming before 2. 3 should come before 4. 3 is coming before 4. 0 should come before 3 and 0 is here before 3. So it satisfies for all the edges. Other way would have been to, uh, while doing DFS, we had seen that we can assign pre and post number to different uh, vertices. So when we start 
DFS. When we first reach a node, we give it a pre number that is arrival time. And when we are returning from it, like when we reach two, there is no outgoing edge. So we are done with it. So we will return from here. So that time we call post timing or departure time. So let's do that here. So we start from zero. So we reached zero at time zero. Then we went to one at time one. Then two at time two. Then there is no way to go. So we return from two at time three. Then we come back to one. There is no outgoing edge further. This we have already explored. So we return return from here at time four. Then we come back to zero. There is there are some unexplored paths. So we come here at time five. Then we come here at time six. Then we return from here at time seven. Then we return from three at time eight. Then we are done with zero at time nine. Now what you should do? Uh, sort all the nodes based on the departure times or post times. Not forget this first time. Just focus on this time. So which is largest? Zero nine, which is for zero. So write zero first. Then next one is eight. So next write three. Eight is for three. Then next one is seven. So this is for node four. Then next one is uh, after seven. These are arrival times. We are not bothered with this. So six is here. Five is here. These are arrival times. Four is here. This post time. So this is for one. And the smallest post time is three. So this is for node two. So write that, and you get the same topological sort order. We could have got a different one since this is not unique. If we uh, did not take this path in the beginning, we would have got a different topological sort. So this is also valid. This is another way. Uh, you keep track of post and pre times and sort them in descending order on the basis of post times. So you will get another uh, topological sort. So let's uh, implement the first one. Second one is even simpler. You don't. You will need to keep track of pre and post times, which we have already seen in our earlier lessons. So in this, uh, we will implement this stack-based solution. So this is our earlier code where we had done some plain DFS, and this is the original recursive implementation of DFS. You can see we are triggering DFS for all the nodes, and then this function is recursively calling. And we will write the code in all the three languages: uh, C plus plus Java and Python. So if you are in Java or Python, you can skip. A few minutes until the C++ part is complete. So I have added the edges for exact same graph, this graph itself, and this is the DFS order. But here we will not do DFS; we will do topological sort. So let's rename it to TS underscore rec, and we will not be printing it. And let's call it topological sort. And we will call this function here. And what we need a stack, and it should be a stack of int, the same data type as the graph. So here, graph has int nodes. Let's call it s, and we will pass it here. So this is the only change, not much change, and we need to change the signature of this topological sort. Not topological sort, but this uh, recursive function. And if state is true, then we put a given node in the end. Once we visit all the nodes, going all the paths, if we have explored all the paths in the end, we put that node in the uh, stack. So we put zero in the end once we had explored all, everything from here. Similarly, if you look at one. From one, there is some outgoing path, so we put this first before putting one. So this, uh, when we are done with all the neighbors of this node, u, then uh, this node s, then we will put it into the stack. S dot push. And what else do we need to take care of here? We need to pass this stack again. And that's it. This stack should hold the nodes. Now, what we will do? We will pop them and print them.
and let's run if we have made any mistake yes we have dfs rec so we are calling we should call ts rec we have renamed it and here also so this is this was the earlier dfs rec since we are doing topological sort we have renamed it now it's working it's printing 03412 and what was our output 03412 so it matches with our output because we followed this criteria that first we tick 1 instead of 3 so if we follow this convention then we will get the same result similarly we will do it in uh, java and python also so this was again our earlier java code for dfs and this was the output and this is the same graph that we are seeing so let's rename them and we will need a stack or let's print in separate lines that should be fine so it prints 03412 again it's 03412 is same as this one now we will do it in python so we are just renaming it and we will pass a stack here so we can use a list as a stack so we will append in the end and also pop from the end so that way it will act as a stack and let's pass in self and we appended here and now so here you see that we are just printing it we have this function available to print the list so we are appending in the end and popping from the end we are not popping in fact we can pop if we pop it we would it would pop 0 then 3 then 4 1 2 so it would be same 0 3 4 1 2 so read it in opposite order 0 3 4 1 2 you can also uh, run a loop till this length is more than 0 pop one item and print just like we did in c++ and java so it would we would get the same result 